Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. My name is Blake. Today we're going to get started with Zelleros uh, winning the uh, Innovation Prize for the European Institute of Innovation and Technology for Global Challenges, and they won a prize around climate action. Of the company, uh, we are more than 40 people working full time in this project, cooperating with other companies, research centers, and basically we know that this is a big project and we have an open ecosystem to cooperate with other companies and with the European framework. We started with the EIT cooperating with Climate Kick from the beginning. They are, were helping us from the first moment uh, to construct this company and help us to grow. Well, congratulations, Zelleros. Um, we're looking forward to uh, hearing more about the uh, work and um, look forward to tracking that. So next, um, big news, uh, Missouri pitched for the high-speed Hyperloop test track of Hyperloop One, um, and they put out a bunch of press. We're just gonna briefly uh, read this Associated Press article, um, and unfortunately it's behind the paywall. But, um, you know, it was a blue ribbon commission uh, looking at how Hyperloop could transform Missouri um, connecting Kansas City, Columbia, St. Louis. Um, they want to build a first a test track of 12 to 15 miles. Um, and it's, you know, just bringing together a lot of business interests and political interests in Missouri, um, as well as a, a pretty straightforward um, project um, where this uh, Hyperloop test you know, facility, but then also connecting these cities um, will be a huge economic benefit. The test track could cost between 300 to $500 million and the full system, um, you know, will be a little bit more <laughs> at around uh, 7.3 to $10 billion, but it's a very long distance. Um, the project needs about 50 to 100 million for research and development alone in the next three years to continue. So really looking forward to uh, seeing that. Here are some photos from the press conferences. Um, and yeah, just a lot of really interesting, um, you know, information that was presented at this and um, pretty historic actually. Um, we've never seen a state in the United States um, push this hard for a Hyperloop uh, facility. And another good article that I'd recommend you check out um, so it's just really informative, um, but then not to be left behind, um, the uh, nether region, uh, Pittsburgh region, um, also wants to uh, benefit from Hyperloop and we're putting together more of a video on that soon, but um, it really seems like a competition between uh, the St. Louis region and the Pittsburgh region to Chicago region for Hyperloop. Um, so that's really exciting. Next, um, Hyper Poland is going through another round of crowdfunding, which is good to see um, after their demonstration uh, last month uh, for their um, uh, technology. And it would be MagRail to HyperRail to Hyperloop. Um, we've definitely not seen any other teams um, think of a phased approach like this, so we're really excited, um, except for the 13-year-old who proposed um, a modification to the Hyperloop to make it better, which we'll talk more about later. And if you're watching, we would love to do an interview with you. So um, next, um, this was really surprising. Um, uh, Mr. Brent Lassard from R Loop um, is talking about more lanes creating induced demand, autonomous vehicles, and congestion equals autonomous congestion. We need a way of thinking about urban mobility. Interested in alternatives? Go to R Loop. Um, x.ca and if you go to our loop x.ca you'll see this nobody enjoys traffic congestion and uh, this seems to be kind of a similar website to Arivo um, where you um, are presented with the problem first the costs the harm but then the solution of poss possible solutions um, like more roads more uh, rail peak hour tolls and then what they're building at RAPT. So it's, and you can kind of see it in the background of this image, but um, 
it appears to be um, autonomous vehicles with kind of a cover that maybe a car could fit in, um, but also kind of um, uh, like a, a, a van of sort that's autonomous that would be going really fast. Um, 400 kilometers an hour, um, you know, apparently using uh, just one lane uh, each way, and it's just really kind of interesting. So finally, we're seeing a lot of progress um, from their news press release of the um, Arivo Hyperloop um, IP tech transfer. So that's great to hear. Um, also in a new development, there's a company called Loop Odyssey and Charles uh, introduced it. He works uh, for them, I think as their CEO. Um, the first company specialized in operation control systems for Hyperloop. This would fit perfectly with the new um, R loop inspired, Revo inspired um, R A P T, um, R loop X <laughs> system, um, and we don't really know much about it. They have a nice uh, new website, um, but if we were to go um, to their website, we see um, some marketing in French. Uh, this is a European team. Um, two years after, um, well. You can read this too, but we're just going to check out their website briefly. Um, really good to see uh, new players in the ecosystem thinking about uh, the logistics of Hyperloop um, and also autonomous vehicles. Um, don't know really much about them or their system, um, but um, there's other players also working in kind of the smart traffic management system for Hyperloop, so it'll be really interesting and we see kind of a some type of a mock-up of a Hyperloop system here. Um, yep, the team and the story, it's been a long time working from 2016 to now. Um, so yeah, really excited. Um, you know, our <laughs> Loop Odyssey, if you wanna do a, an interview, we're happy to do one. Um, so yeah, looking forward to do, learning more about this and just exactly what their system and simulation stuff uh, looks like um, because they've been thinking it pretty hard um, apparently so um, next um, another more established player Hyperloop TT uh, Mr. Beep Bop uh, who we've done an interview with on the show um, many years ago um, put out this image we've never seen this kind of image before of cargo shipping containers fit onto Hyperloop TT um, pods um, they're now interested in autonomous vehicles uh, to transfer and quickly load containers onto Hyperloop freight capsules. So we're seeing not people, but freight as Hyperloop TT's kind of um, short-term goal. And two days ago, um, Hyperloop TT was pleased to announce our new partnership with leading French transport and logistics corporation, Gossen, uh, for the creation of, and supply of new AIV Hyperloop TT electric self-driving vehicles that will carry and transfer containers for the Hyperloop freight system. AIV Hyperloop TT will have the task of carrying containers from the port storage area to up to the Hyperloop TT freight capsule and transferring them using a lateral transfer module that has existing and proven capability in other rail load logistic applications. Um, really interesting. Um, we haven't yet seen uh, a lot of renders uh, for this and we'll just check out uh, their website real quick hyperloop.global um, and as that loads um, we're just gonna watch this video well and that was a short video <laughs> but um, we'll go to the website later but also another player in the cargo sphere of um, Hyperloop is SwissPod. We saw one of their um, chief technology officers post this on LinkedIn, but it's just kind of interesting to see um, the pressure vessel um, of the C1 subservice Hyperloop vessel boasts an advanced pressure vessel to house non-vacuum grade environmental sensitive cargo and eventually humans. Um, our approach is non-obtrusive and um, yeah, it's just really interesting. We haven't yet seen how they're going to load any cargo onto that uh, vehicle, so stay tuned for that. But with that, let us know what you think. Um, 
are there any other um, companies or groups that you've heard of that are also working on Hyperloop technology? It's just really exciting to see all these groups around the world um, and initiatives in the US um, finally coming to a flourish and, and test tracks uh, being built out at greater lengths and distances. And we still haven't heard anything about the Hyperloop, um, SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition test track or anything. I know a lot of the teams are wondering about that, but we're still um, waiting for a word on that. So stay in the loop and have a good day.